The anticipation has been high for this one, and it is finally here. It's Joshua Vergara. What's going on, everybody? Let's take a look at the OnePlus Nord. And actually, it's not just going to be the OnePlus Nord, because they come with some new little buddies. We are also going to look at the OnePlus Buds. And here it is, the OnePlus Nord in the flesh, or in my hand. So I'm very lucky to be able to do some work with this phone because this is not a smartphone as interesting as it is that is making it to the States. We can hope and dream that one day it will, but this is meant for markets in Asia and plenty of them in Europe. And we'll get to that detail a little bit more later after I unbox this bad boy for you and also give you some of my first thoughts. As usual, you can look forward to things like my real-world camera test and also my top 5 complaints and takeaways as I finish up my coverage of this phone. Look forward to all of that by subscribing to my channel. Now, like with most things, OnePlus has meticulously designed the unboxing experience. It came with a few very important uh, accessories. But you can see that the Nord branding is all over the place. They clearly want to push this new branding as much as possible, and they really believe in what they are creating in this new Nord experience. After all, once you get past the initial cover, there's documentation and letters from the CEO welcoming us to the Nord. One thing that I always appreciate in these unboxing experiences is an included clear case. This one in particular actually has a little bit of Nord design on it as well. After that, there's a Warp Charge 30 charger in here, but of course I would have to adapt this charger, and that leads me to one of the first accessories that OnePlus included, and that is a Warp Charge 30T charger that works with my plugs. Spoiler alert, I think including Warp Charge 30T support in the OnePlus Nord is a huge move, and it's a great thing to have in a phone that's not necessarily high-end or their flagship. But let's go ahead and get on to the design because as these teasers and as these little documentaries that OnePlus has been posting on their social media allude to, they really put a lot of thought into how they can design their new phone. They're not very bashful about how thick the phone is and partially the reason why is because they went with a flat display. This is still an AMOLED display but there's no curve on it like you might see in plenty of other phones that we have in 2019 and 2020. There is a curve on the back though, on this Gorilla Glass backing that has the new signature marble blue color. I'm just gonna give my honest opinion here. I know this is the signature color of the OnePlus Nord, but I'm personally glad that there's still a gray variant. And if you want some more looks at that, Jaime has it over at Pocket Now. I don't hate this color, it's just that I don't really love it. So it's a good thing that OnePlus included some cases with my phone. Two of them are of the sandstone material, and we are all familiar with the sandstone black up until this point. There's also a sandstone marble blue, so it shows the color in a different way. Uh, instead of this glossy backing that is on the phone itself, we have a matted sandstone version of it. After that, there is a thicker clear case, but between the clear cases, I would prefer the one that's in the box because it has a little bit more design to it anyway. So now we can go through the rest of the spec sheet, and as I do so, I want to hear what your reactions are to it. Let's get back to the display since I already mentioned it. It's a flat panel, full HD plus AMOLED panel, which means that's going to provide some great colors and an ambient display in this case. Uh, but on top of all of that, it is a 90 hertz refresh rate screen. Honestly, for me, on pretty much any device, I'm going to appreciate a higher refresh rate, and it's something I'm already enjoying on the OnePlus Nord with things like Call of Duty Mobile and any media that I'm watching. And it certainly helps that Oxygen OS is so easy on the eyes. It's still a nice software package that wraps Android up in a very accessible and very smooth experience. So uh, this is something that we are used to from like the OnePlus 8 and the OnePlus 8 Pro, and it just sort of transfers over to the Nord. And of course, powering all of this is the Snapdragon 765G, which I actually really like this choice. I think at first we all thought the 765G was going to lead to much lower experiences on the Android realm, when in reality, in the couple of phones that I have used it in so far, I don't really feel that much of a difference. And it's not like OnePlus left out features that would help in those more intensive situations like gaming, there's still the gaming mode and even the fanatic mode to really drive that home. Rounding out the spec sheet is 8GB of RAM and 128GB of onboard storage for the base model. However, the one that's in my hand has 12GB of RAM and 256GB of onboard storage. One thing that's missing that is a tiny bit of a sting is wireless charging. However, the OnePlus 8, uh, the regular OnePlus 8, did not have that feature anyway. And I gotta say, once again, Warp Charge 30T being supported on here means that you can charge this thing up pretty easily and you can get power back in that 4,115 mAh battery 
quite rapidly. Now, I'm still gonna be taking this phone out for real world camera tests and I want to show you all of the photos and videos that I get with this phone, but let's just talk about the actual lenses that OnePlus included. On the rear, you get the same 48 megapixel sensor that was on the original OnePlus 8. That means you can do things like 48 megapixel high resolution shots and you still get a lot of the same modes that are available in the other models. Backing up that main sensor is an 8 megapixel ultra wide angle lens, a 2 megapixel macro, and a 5 megapixel depth sensor for portraits. Speaking of portraits, I was pretty interested in the self-portrait game because the main front camera is a 32 megapixel camera, but it's backed up by an 8 megapixel ultra wide. But that's not even the best part. You can imagine how excited I was to find out that both of the lenses on the front, the main lens and the ultra wide, both of them can do 4K at up to 60 frames per second. So you know that's got me excited to try this phone out as a vlogging machine. I'm super excited to do that, so look forward to my real world camera test coming soon. Again, I want to know what your reactions are to this entire spec sheet in the comments down below. You still get a lot of the same features that you could expect from like the OnePlus 8 and the OnePlus 8 Pro. In-display fingerprint reader, fast face unlock, uh, and a lot of the same experiences with Oxygen OS and multiple cameras. But even better about this highly accessible package is the highly accessible price. This phone comes in at 399 euros, 499 if you go for the higher variant. Time will tell what the experience ends up being like over time with the OnePlus Nord, but just judging by the spec sheet, I think that we're about to have a good time with this thing, and I can't wait to actually experience all that and share it with you. The thing is, we're not just here to talk about the OnePlus Nord. Feel free to have those conversations in the comments, but there's one more product that OnePlus announced today, and it's their first ever true wireless earbuds. We actually got two versions of it. These are the OnePlus Buds. Now I'm going to keep things pretty simple for this OnePlus Buds kind of mini review here, uh, mainly because these are the types of buds that may not be my absolute favorite, but after using them for a few days, I can exactly see where OnePlus was going with these. Now these earbuds don't sound bad, but they have a construction that I'm not necessarily the biggest fan of. They're a lot more like the original AirPods in that it's just a hard shell and there's no seal whatsoever. This type of design also doesn't lend itself very well to bass response. If you're more of a bass head and you really want to get that bass that you can feel in your head, that's not going to happen here. You can hear the bass there and it's still something you can appreciate, but earbuds like this definitely prioritize the mid-range uh, spectrum, especially for things like voices and vocal content and dialogue. But there are benefits to this kind of design. After all, you can have a more open design because there's not a big seal in your ear, which means even if you have the earbuds in, you can still have quite a bit of spatial and environmental awareness. Also, some of you might lament the stem right here, but one of OnePlus's focuses with the OnePlus Buds is a good microphone experience. That's because a certain level of noise cancellation actually happens during calls to isolate your voice and make it easier for the recipient to hear. I did a couple of calls with my girlfriend recently and she said that the sound was perfectly fine, no complaints whatsoever. The buds are very glossy, yet the case is quite matted, and it all leads to just this very simple design, especially for the white version. A simple LED on the front, a USB-C port for fast charging the case, and then a button on the back so that you can press and hold it to initiate a pairing mode if you want to connect these to things like laptops. But as far as pairing these with any OnePlus device, it's as easy as opening up the case and waiting for that notification to pop up. There is a little bit of tuning that you can do in the sound settings, including a simple toggle for OnePlus Buds enhancements, but as far as other customizations are concerned, these are incredibly simple. For example, the touch controls on each earbud uh, are just a double tap to get to the next track, but this can be changed in a future software update. But of course, OnePlus is pushing the blue marble like I've been saying, so they have it for the OnePlus Buds as well. What's interesting about these OnePlus Buds though is that there's this green color on the inside of the case. You can let me know what you think of that look in the comments. Now one thing I do appreciate about the OnePlus Buds is that you can use either one in a single fashion. So if you have one in and you're just listening to something like an audiobook or a podcast, uh, you can go for up to seven hours of battery life. And in my case, I got more than six for sure. I, I didn't go all the way to 0% on the one earbud that I had in, but it was just as easy as putting one back in, getting the other one, and I had another six or seven hours to continue that audiobook or podcast. All together with the case, OnePlus rates these at 30 hours of battery life, but with that USB-C port on the bottom, if you need to quick charge the case, you can get 10 hours back with just a 10 minute charge. And finally, there is an IPX4 uh, rating on these, so they should be able to handle like light workouts. Uh, I don't know if you get like super sweaty if it's going to damage these, but I did do a couple of workouts with these recently and they work just fine. 
One thing I do applaud OnePlus for prioritizing is low latency. If you're going to get into, say, the Fnatic mode in a game, you are able to get the latency down to 103 milliseconds so that you're not getting that delay between your game and what you hear. OnePlus have done a pretty good job in the audio space already with the Bullets and the Bullets Wireless, even if they have the neckband design. But as far as truly wireless earbuds go, this is a great starting point, especially since they come in at $79. And these products are going to be made in places including the States, so they are available if you do love your OnePlus products and you want to get into their version of truly wireless audio. We all demanded it for so long, but now OnePlus have finally given us the affordable versions of very good experiences in both smartphones and audio today with their announcements. I gave you the spec sheet, I gave you the rundown, and a few of my initial thoughts, so I want to know what you think about all of that in the comment sections down below. Let me know what you think and what you're excited for with this new phone. Also, let me know what you think of the OnePlus Buds. At the very least, drop some likes on this video, but feel free to get into the discussions happening in the comment sections down below. For now, I'm just going to call it on this one, take care of yourselves and each other, and until my next video, I would just remind you to enjoy your tea, everybody.